Today we will be solving this problem called prime multiples. So we are given k distinct prime numbers a1 through ak and an integer n. And our task is to calculate how many of the first n positive integers are divisible by at least one of the given prime numbers. So the first line of our input contains two integers n and k. n is very large, it can be up to 10 to the 18th, but k is small, it's only up to 20. And this 20 is a hint that we would be using bit masking to go through all possible subsets. Then on the second line we have uh, k prime numbers uh, from 2 to n. And the answer to this input is 12 because there are 12 numbers that are divisible by 2 or 5 in the range from 1 to 20. So this is our example and this is our range from 1 to 20 and let's find out how many numbers are divisible by 2 and how many are divisible by 5. So the even numbers are divisible by 2 so it would be these and how many are there? There are 10 of them so 10 in divisible by 2. What about 5? We have 5, 10, 15, and 20. So 4 n divisible by 5. But remember, this n is very large, so we cannot keep going through all the numbers from 1 to n and check if a number is divisible by that prime p. So how could we get this answer 10 and 4 uh, without going through all the numbers? So these numbers that that are divisible by 2 are actually multiples of 2. So this 4 is 2 times 2, this 10 is 2 times 5, and this 20 is 2 times 10. And that's where this 10 came from. So basically, we could get this 10 by just dividing 20 by 2. So 20 divided by 2 gives us the number of multiples of 2 that are less than or equal to 20. And that's precisely what we're looking for. And similarly, we could get this 4 by just dividing 20 by 5. And from this, our answer should be 10 plus 4, which is 14. But this is not true, because as we saw, the answer is 12. But why isn't, why isn't this correct? So as you can see here, 10 and 20 were counted twice since they are multiples of both 2 and 5. So this should be minus 2 and that way the answer would be 12. So here we double counted and we counted 10 and 20 twice and to avoid that there is a principle in counting and combinatorics that help us avoid double counting and that principle is the inclusion exclusion principle and what does th what this says is that it is a way of counting the union of sets so th the problem we have here can be translated to a problem of sets so in the case here uh, where k is equal to 2 first of all if k is equal to 1 then it is pretty straightforward our answer would be just and divided by p1 as we showed now for k equals 2 i will represent this problem as uh, as two sets so suppose we have two sets here let's call the first one a and the second one b so this set a represents the numbers that are divisible by 2 and this set represents the numbers that are divisible by 5 and in their intersection we will have numbers like 10 and 20 that are divisible by both 10 and uh, by both 2 and 5. So the inclusion exclusion principle tells us that the size of their union what we are looking for. So the union here can be trans can be translated to a or. So we are looking for the numbers that are divisible by 2 or that are divisible by 5. That's why we need to count the union of set A and set B. 
So the union here would be equal to the size of A plus the size of B minus the size of their intersection. So the numbers that are divisible by 2 or that are divisible by 5 are the numbers that are divisib divisible by 2 plus the numbers that are divisible by 5 minus the numbers that are divisible by 2 and 5. So intersection here stands for AND and union stands for OR. Great. So the formula here is straightforward like we can see from here. So this is the size of A and this is the size of B. So if we added these together, we would have counted this region twice. That's why we had to subtract it once. That's what we did here. And now let's move on to the case where k is equal to 3. In that case, we would have three sets. A, B, and C. And this would be the case if we had three prime numbers. So let's call this A. B and C and let's give names to these regions I'll call this A, this B, C, D, E, F and G so from this diagram our answer A union B union C should be equal to A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F plus G. So basically we will just add the set of all these regions and since they are disjoint then we don't have any problem here. And this would correspond to the number of elements that are divisible by PA or PB or PC. So how could we get a formula for the case for K equals 3? So let's start by calculating a few things. So the size of A here is equal to A plus D plus F plus G. The size of B is equal to B plus E plus uh, B plus E plus D plus G. The size of C is equal to C plus E plus F plus G. Great. Now let's count, let's calculate the size of intersections. Here we have an intersection between A and B, this one. So the intersection of A and B is equal to D plus G. And the intersection of A and C is equal to G plus F, so F plus G. And the intersection of B and C would be equal to E plus G. And here, since we have three sets, there is an additional intersection here of all three sets, which is G here. So the intersection of A and B and C is equal to G. So let's, let's add these three uh, sets together. So A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C plus... 2D plus 2E plus 2F plus 3G. So these, this, these were uh, the sizes of elements of sets that had only one element. And these are the sizes of uh, intersection of two sets. And this is the intersection of three sets. So let's add these three together as well. So the intersections of two sets, A uh, intersection B plus A intersection C plus B intersection C would be equal to D plus F plus E plus 3G. So let's compare here. This is the answer we're looking for. So we need an A plus B plus C and we have it here. But here we only have uh, one D, one E, one F, whereas here we have two Ds. And if we subtract this from this, this will take care of that. So we'd have A plus B plus C plus 2D minus D. So this would give us a D here. 
as we wanted so let's do that so let's calculate this so we'll have this minus this so this minus this this should be a minus would be equal to this minus this which will give us a plus b plus c plus d plus e plus f but notice we don't have any g's here whereas in the correct answer we had the g here so that's why we need to add this as well to the answer so our answer should have this so we should add that in this case so it should be plus this so we would have a plus g here so in case of k equals 3 we had a plus b plus c minus the intersections of two sets plus the intersection of three sets and in general as we can see here in general in its general form the principle of inclusion exclusion states that for finite sets a1 through an one has the identity that the union will be the sum of the sizes of single elements minus the intersection of two elements plus the intersection of three elements minus the intersection of four elements and so on so if the intersection here has an even number of elements it goes with a minus and if it had an odd number of elements like here or here it goes with a plus so that's pretty much it this would help us solve the problem so here if in case of uh, k equals 2 our answer would be equal to n over p1 this would correspond to this plus n over p2 minus n over what is the intersection of a and b so if a number is divisible by p1 and p2 then it is divisible by their product so this would be minus p1 times p2 and here in the for case k equals 3 then the answer would be equal to n over p1 plus n over p2 plus n over p3 minus n over the intersection of a b would be p1 times p2 minus n over p1 times p3 minus n over p2 times p3 plus n over p1 times p2 times p3 and this corresponds to this so if a number is divisible by p1 p2 and p3 then it's divisible by their product but notice here we need to generate all these combinations and for each combination like our final answer we will go through all the possible combinations of the pk primes we have and we will count how many prime numbers are in that combination if it is even like here we will subtract it from our answer and if it is odd like here or here we will just add it to our answer and in order to generate all these subsets we will use bit masks so let's see how will that work so basically uh, let's try to solve this example here we our n is equal to 50 and we have three prime numbers 2 3 and 5 so basically uh, we need to generate all subsets 2 3 5 2 3 and so on so how could we do that here there is something magical about uh, how uh, the binary system works so for example this this choice of 2 and 3 I can represent it here by saying that uh, I have 2, 3, 5 so I will assign 1 to the numbers that I chose so 1 here, 1 here and 0 here so basically this choice corresponds to this number in binary for here if I choose only 3 this would correspond to 0, 1, 0 and if I choose all 3 of them 
this would correspond to 1 1 1 and so if I count from 0 0 0 to 1 1 1 I would have gone through all possible subsets so let's see how that would work so this is the binary representations of numbers from 0 to 7 which is equal to 2 to the third minus 1 so basically if we want to generate all subsets of n elements we just count from 0 to 2 to the n minus 1 and each number in this range represents a particular subset and as we said in our problem we need to see for each subset the number of contributions it will, uh, the number of uh, prime numbers it has so it's either gonna have one prime number or two or three and the, so our answer will be equal to this minus this plus this so our first number is zero so here we don't choose any prime numbers so we're just not gonna consider this then we move on to this here we choose 5 so this corresponds to 5 and this is a choice of one prime number and this would contribute as we saw n divided by 5 which is 50 divided by 5 so we would add 10 here we move on to this so here again it, it's gonna contribute to the first here and it's gonna contribute 50 divided by uh, 3 which is 16 so plus 16 and then here we have two numbers so this will contribute 50 divided by 15 which would give us 3 and we would have to add it here so minus 3 and then here we have 2 so it will contribute to this and we will add here uh, 25 Moving on to this, we have two prime numbers, 2 and 5, so their product is 10. So this will contribute a plus 5 here. Again here we have two numbers here, so 2 and 3, so their product is 6. And again I can contribute 50 divided by 6, which is equal to 8, so plus 8 here. And finally, here we have three prime numbers and their product would be 30 so 50 divided by 30 is just 1 and our final answer will be this sum which is equal to 35 plus 10 is 45 plus 6 is 51 minus 11 plus 5 is 16 so minus 16 plus 1 so this would be equal to 51 minus 15 and this would give us 36 so our final answer is 36 and this means that out of the 50 numbers from 1 to 50 36 are divisible by either 2 3 or 5 so that's pretty much it and now let's check out the code so this is our program we'll start by reading n and k notice here that n has to be a long long then we will uh, declare a vector of long longs because our primes can also be large we will scan our primes then we will declare a vector of long long to count uh, the, the contributions that we represented here so we're gonna count the contributions of of uh, one prime two primes and so on so that's why here I have a count by number of devices up to k plus 1 because uh, this is one indexed. Then I will have, I will go through all subsets. So I will start my mask from 1 because there is no point in processing this. And I will go all the way to 2 to the k. And 2 to the k here can be just calculated with 1 shifted by k. And for each mask, I will count the number of divisors and its contribution. So for the contribution, as we did here, we divided n by p1, p2, and so on. So in order not to change the value of n, I will declare a temporary variable each time to count the contribution of this mask. So I'll loop 
through all the values from from i equals zero to k to check which bits are set in this max so each time i will shift one by i so basically if i if i have this mask and i'll start with i equals zero so one shifted by zero would be equal to one so this would help me check if this bit is on or not if i do the end here this would give me one and this means that this bit is on but if i did the end here the zero and one is just zero so i will know this bit is off so if one shifted by i and mask this means that i is on that means that this prime the prime at position i is uh, contributes to this mask so i need to process it so this means i have to increment the number of divisors and i have to divide uh, n which is tmp in this case by primes of i and it is worth mentioning that i don't need to do this uh, this number of devices to count how many bits are on i can ju just use the built-in pop count function here if i give it a mask or any integer it will return the number of bits that are on and after i process this mask i will just add these contributions which will be equal to tmp to the number of divisors and at the end i'll just initialize my answer with zero and loop through all values from one to k and if i is even as we saw here so if i is even i have to take it with a minus sign that's why i have a minus sign here otherwise if it is odd i'll just add it with a plus sign and at the end i just print my answer so that's pretty much it let's go ahead and submit so that worked thank you for watching see you in the next video bye bye